Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to St. Paul, virtually, as we gather together to celebrate our Lord's resurrection on this the second Sunday of Easter. Just a few announcements um, before we continue. One, um, our um, young people are having Sunday school today at 11.30. It'll be a, a Zoom Sunday school meeting, and just check the email that went out Thursday, our SPEN e-news, uh, for the link to uh, in information on how to get onto that. Tomorrow, our church council is meeting, again, by Zoom. It's the best way to do it right now. Council is meeting at 7 p.m. If by chance you've had any questions of the church council and uh, you'd like us to, anything in particular to discuss, if you would please send your questions to the church office tomorrow, preferably uh, earlier in the day, not at 645. That way we can make sure to, if there's something important we need to uh, add to the agenda, we can do that. And then uh, we still have uh, uh, different opportunities for you to, uh, I guess, uh, have a little uh, spiritual enrichment during the week. In addition to our Monday through Friday Pastor Rick Reflections, there's going to be a Wednesday meditation on Zoom, and there will be a link sent out uh, to be able to plug into that on Wednesday. So look for all of those opportunities uh, to continue to, to be a part of the ministry that continues to go on in these strange times. Now, our, um, the few of us that are gathered here are already saying happy birthday to him, but if you are a Facebook friend of him, of his, or want to just add it on to uh, a message during worship, it happens to be Chase's birthday today, so we are blessed to have the gift of Chase as, as part of our ministry here, and we are so thankful for each day that he continues to uh, just uh, add to add joy to our life with his music. We will continue our worship with the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give, we give you thanks, O oh God. For in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise, praise you for, for your salvation, salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading comes from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man arrested to you, attested to you by God, with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the de definitive plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh was, will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put on one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that, all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read Psalm 16 responsibly. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All, all my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have I set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices, my body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God, through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, it is testified by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor with Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked, for the disciples, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace. Be with you as the father has sent me so I send you when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained but Thomas who was called the twin one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came so the other disciples told him we have seen the Lord but he said to them Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and inside, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Well, now it's time for me to turn on my microphone. Now it's time for our children. Whoa! Sorry about that. And our sound person is going to bring it down just a little more. Hope that didn't scare you at home. And for those of you who are about to fall asleep, sorry, because that just woke you up. Now it's time for our children's message. It's a little hard without my little ones around me, like, you know, Olivia and Malia and Roscoe and Oliver and Ellie, but. I imagine them on the other side here. You know, there are some things that we know are there, but we just can't see. Like, you know, we know that there's wind, right? You sometimes feel the wind. The wind can move things around. Okay, well, a little trick we had didn't work on this one. The wind can sometimes move things around. You might, Ari, you were trying to blow something with the fan. Anyway, it worked in practice. So, but you know that the wind is there. You see the trees moving back and forth. You hear the rumbling on my microphone because the wind from this fan is blowing against it. And you may have just seen that tissue just fly by. We tried. But you still know the wind is there even though can't see it, it's there. Or you can't see sound, but sometimes you hear something and you know it's there, right? That whistle made a sound, but you didn't see it. We don't see sound waves, but when you hear me talk, when you hear a, a, a plane flying by, you hear that, I mean, 
you hear somebody's horn honking, when you're listening to it, you know that there's sound, but you don't see it. You know, we know that we believe that Jesus has done all kinds of incredible things for us, but we don't see Jesus. I mean, we see pictures of Jesus in the Bible and, and pictures that artists have made of Jesus, but we don't see him. We read about how, you know, the wonderful things that he did for people. We hear when, when people believe in him and we know that it changes their lives, that helps us realize that Jesus is present and that Jesus promised to be here. We believe that Jesus did exist and that Jesus is here. We just, we don't see him. And sometimes that makes it harder for people to believe when they can't see things. Like today, when, when I just read about Thomas. Thomas wasn't there when all the other disciples were gathered after Jesus rose. And Jesus showed up and greeted them. And they saw Jesus and they believed in him. And so all the disciples went and found him. They saw their friend Thomas and they told him about it. He's like, I didn't see it. I don't believe it. And then Jesus showed up again and the next time they were all gathered and Thomas was there. And Jesus told Thomas to put his hands where the nails had been or, or where Jesus had been pierced in the side. And Thomas saw and believed. And that was a great gift to Thomas. And those disciples went all over the world, the, the, the world that they knew, and told people about how Jesus had died and was risen for all of us. And the people they told didn't see Jesus. But Jesus gives us the ability to have faith. And sometimes maybe we don't see everything, but because of what we know Jesus has told us and how other people have shared that story, we believe in Jesus even though we didn't see him. Faith is a tough thing. It's a gift from God. It's not something that we know for sure. Just like, I don't know, when I, if I didn't see somebody blow that whistle, how would I know where that sound came from? But I heard the noise, and you heard the noise too. And so you know that that was real. We hear wonderful things about how Jesus changes lives and wonderful stories about Jesus. And that's one of the ways that we know that Jesus is real and loves us and died and rose for us. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for Jesus who died and rose for each one of us. And we thank you for the people over the years that have shared that story so that we could come to believe as well. Continue to help us and use us to share our lives, our stories about you, and to share your love so that other people may believe in you as well. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So if I were to mention the names of certain disciples and ask you to, to write down the first word or the first phrase that comes to your mind, um, there are some disciples who might come up with the same thing. Now, I could mention some and you would just be like, completely clueless because there are actually some disciples that aren't mentioned very much in Scripture. But if I were to mention the name of Judas, well, many of you would probably write down the word betrayer or traitor or who knows. Um, not all of you. Maybe some of you would write down Iscariot, which is kind of his last name, or, um, or you might write down um, Twin, which was one of his one of his nicknames, we don't know exactly why. If I were to mention Simon Peter, some of you might write down, you know, uh, something about Peter's confession or, or uh, his strong faith or the fact he denied Jesus, three, denied Jesus three times or the fact he was a fisherman. If I were to mention the names of James and John, you might put brothers, fishermen. Some people who do a lot of Bible reading might write down Sons of Thunder. That's kind of a nickname they got in Scripture. But you might have a few different things. But when I mention the word Thomas, there's little doubt about 
the fact that most of us would write down doubt. You know, and indeed, they're, well, so closely have we associated the word Thomas with doubt that over history we've used the phrase calling people who are doubters, we call them doubting Thomases. And there aren't that many names in history that carry on such a title. I mean, we already mentioned Judas, you know, who's commonly referred to, you know, when we are talking about someone who's betrayed us. We use the same kind of name, um, you know, we'll, we'll call somebody sometimes a Benedict Arnold. If you remember your American history, you know, we call someone who's a traitor a Benedict Arnold. There's another one that's popped up every so often, the phrase Peeping Tom has been around for a while. It's a legendary phrase, but it's in reference to the story of Lady Godiva, look it up if you don't know it, uh, who rode, basically, rode naked horseback through her town to protest, to protest high taxes. Legend has it that in respect for her, all the townspeople closed their curtains so they wouldn't see her doing this, except for one guy that had to go out and peek. His name happened to be Tom, and that's where we get peeping Tom. But no name has seemed to stick with someone quite like Doubting Thomas, and I don't think it's fair to remember him that way. Now, you might be interested to know that there is no mention of Thomas in the first three Gospels. We are told absolutely nothing about him. It's only in John's Gospel that we hear about him, and in, in there there's only around 150 words about him. There's not a lot, but there's more than one description. We have one case about Thomas when Jesus turned his face toward Jerusalem, the disciples thought it would be a certain death for all of them. Surprisingly, it was Thomas who said, well, then let us go also so that we may die with him. It was a courageous statement, yet we never remember Thomas for that. We also fail to point out in, in this story of Thomas's doubt that we have the only place in the gospel where the divinity of Christ is bluntly stated. You know, the story that gives us Thomas's nickname is also the one where we have that first earth-shattering confession of faith after the resurrection. My Lord and my God. Not teacher, not Lord, not rabbi, not Messiah, but God. And it's the only place where Jesus is called God without any qualification of any kind. Thomas was simply recognizing the fact, well, a fact about Jesus, just like recognizing 2 plus 2 equals 4, or the sun is in the sky. You are my God. You are my Lord. Those are not the words of a doubter. But unfortunately, history has remembered him for this scene when the resurrection Jesus shows up, and Thomas wasn't there, and when he heard about the event, refused to believe. You know, maybe it was the beginning of modern-day cynicism. Maybe the news sounded just too good to be true. But we know Thomas's words, unless I feel the nail prints in his hands, I'm not going to believe. Now, I can't help but notice that Thomas separated himself from the disciples, and because of that, he missed the resurrection appearance. Maybe, just maybe, John is trying to tell us that Christ appears most often within the community of believers that we call the church, and that when we separate ourselves from the church, that maybe we, well, we take a chance of missing that incredible presence. But the story doesn't end there. You know, we see that Jesus comes that second time. Thomas, is wit Thomas witnesses the event, and this time he believes. Well, what do we learn from all this about the life of Thomas? I think one thing that is we fail to realize in all of this is that there's nothing wrong with doubting. You know, we don't need to be doubting everything or doubting all the time, but there are real questions that we have sometimes, and we need to be able to search for those answers. Put yourself in Thomas's shoes for a minute. What if one of your closest friends had been in, heaven forbid, some kind of horrible accident? You go to the hospital to visit them. After the person passes away, you go to the funeral. And then maybe you've been distraught for a little bit and, and this friend, we'll just give him a fictitious name, this friend Jimmy usually went out to eat with a group of you every maybe every Sunday after church and you were still upset and missed church that week. 
Then you saw some of your friends and they said, hey, when we all went out to lunch after church, Jimmy had the most incredible joke. Let me tell it to you. You wouldn't believe it. You had seen what had happened to him. You'd been to the funeral. And now they're telling me that this person is alive again and was with them. Those things just don't happen. I don't blame Thomas. He saw the resurrection of Lazarus. But I don't blame him because these things don't happen all the time. And when Jesus does appear to Thomas later on, he doesn't chastise him for not believing. He actually says, here, if this is what you need to believe, touch me. And he's just glad that Thomas was able to believe. Jesus is not upset with them because of his doubts. Sometimes people are, well, looked down upon, even in churches, because they have questions of faith. They doubt their faith when bad things happen. And yet, Jesus understands that. On the cross, Jesus actually said, My God, my God, why have you left me? Why have you forsaken me? It says Jesus did that to fulfill the scriptures, but Jesus was in agony and wondered what was going on. Doubt sometimes helps us to dig in to well, our unbelief, our fears, whatever. And when we express those to other people, that's an opportunity for us to help them, to share what Jesus has meant in our life or what faith means to us and help that person rather than tell them, I can't believe you don't believe. But one of the reasons I really like Thomas is that Thomas has no problem telling it like it is. I mentioned one of the other references to Thomas when, the, when Jesus and the disciples were about to head towards Jerusalem. They knew that the Jews were already thinking about ways that they could kill Jesus. And they didn't really want Jesus to go. But Thomas with his deep faith, even at that point, said, let us go to Jerusalem too, that we may die with him. He believed in Jesus so deeply, trusted him so much, he was willing to go to the end with him. And then later on in John, in chapter 14, after Jesus has, has washed the disciples' feet, he's, he's there with them, he's you know, this close to being arrested, Jesus talks to the disciples in the words that we often uh, use as a gospel in, in memorial services and funerals, the thing, you know, you could probably repeat it back to me. You know, my father's house, there are many different mansions, rooms, many places. And I go, you know, and if it were not so, would I go and prepare a place for you? And then and Jesus says, and you know the place where I am going. Now, most of the disciples probably did not follow Jesus' words completely on this. And they just kept their mouth shut. But Thomas said, as I like to say, he told it like it is and said, Jesus, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus says those words that we all know by heart. I am the way and the truth and the life. Those came from Thomas asking the important question that no one else had the guts to ask. It's okay to tell it like it is and to ask the question, which then can lead to deeper faith. We don't hear much about Thomas after our story that we have today. But there are legends about his life and what happens after uh, today's Gospel reading. While we don't know this for certain, but legend has it that Thomas went probably further than almost any other disciple in terms of geography and spreading the word. Thomas is said to have made it all the way to India, and some legend and sources even have him making it over to places like, uh, you know, a little bit even further east, kind of the, the Indochina kind of area. But he's the patron saint of India. They say that he went over there, and one legend about him has it that he was uh, sold into slavery for, to a king, and then he told the king that if he gave him a, if he gave him some money, he would build him a castle, a palace that would last forever. 
And so then Thomas didn't go out and buy building supplies. Thomas went and distributed that wealth among the poor of that part of India. And he was freed then from his slavery because of that, because he, the king understood that Thomas was building up a palace of people, a kingdom of people, through the sharing of the riches that the king had. And he understood what Thomas was talking about in terms of the eternal kingdom. Spread faith to a part of the world that had not heard the good news yet. So I hope that the next time you think about Thomas, you don't just think about well, the fact that he was doubting Thomas, but remember that he was a person of great faith who took his faith, faith to the far ends of the world as he knew it. He died as a martyr, but also he was willing to ask the important questions that helped make his faith grow. And because of his questions, and because of the things he did, we have been blessed and our faith has grown as a part of it. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for witnesses like Thomas. We, like Thomas, have doubts. Doubts are real. And yet sometimes they help bring us to deeper faith. Thank you for people like Thomas who are willing to ask the important questions so we may continue to learn more about you, so we may continue to grow in faith, and that we may be so empowered like Thomas to share your love wherever we go. Continue to bless us, to be a blessing to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and is buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promise of hope, promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in, in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony, so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made, so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace to all. We continue to pray for those who protect us in difficult times and do all they can to keep peace in this world. For those in the military that we know, Cody, Kathy, Devin, Sam, Dallas, Samuel, Blake, Alex, Chris, Eddie, for police officers, for firefighters, for EMTs, for those who are bringing peace and wholeness as they work in hospitals to help those suffering from this pandemic, for leaders who are struggling to make wise decisions, give them wisdom and understanding as we all work through this together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Open the hearts we close, O oh God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need, especially those who continue to recover from tornadoes that hit earlier in this season, for people who are out of work as a result of the pandemic or other reasons. We pray for those who are sick or in need. Ed, Judy, Patty, Mark, Doreen, Corinne, Hines, Claude, Marty, Carl, Dorothy, Joseph, James, Connor, Melissa, Mary, John, and Greg. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord. prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, and the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O oh God, as we remember those who have died in faith, especially Floyd. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Father of all, you love the world so much that you gave your only Son, and you pour out your Spirit in a continuing activity of grace. May we be so caught up in the richness of your grace that our own giving is renewed, and our own selves refreshed by the living water of Jesus, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.